Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming and joining us today um, for equine pre-vet animal science visit day. Um, we're just gonna let everybody log in here for a few minutes, uh, make sure everybody can get on. It looks like the numbers are climbing. <clears throat> we did start our day with our animal science session, which will be posted. Um, we will post that recording. So if you are interested in the animal science as well and you weren't able to attend the session, um, you'll be able to go back and watch that. Um, so we are at the Western Farm right now. Kind of see some horses behind me. Um, you know, they are in class. Uh, I just like to apologize for not being able to host an in-person event. We really encourage all of you to go online and schedule a private visit with us. We'd be happy to show you around campus. We'd be happy to show you the barns um, and have you chat one-on-one -on -one with our faculty. Um, but we're really excited that you were able to log on and join us today. Uh, we are going to hear from students. We are gonna hear from faculty members in our different programs. Um, we will have the English equestrian session at 2.30. Um, so when you guys ask questions, you're welcome to drop questions in the Q&A throughout the session. Make sure you guys are using the Q&A and not the chat, all right? So, um, but in the chat right now, I want to hear where you guys are coming from. So um, drop your state, your hometown. Let's see where you guys are coming from. New Jersey, Rhode Island, Indiana. Very cool, some Ohio, Pennsylvania, upstate New York. Very good, awesome. Great, and it looks like our numbers of, of participants has stopped climbing, so we're probably ready to start. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Art O'Brien and Mary Marsh, and they will introduce themselves and get started. Hi, everybody. My name is Mary Marsh. I'm the director of the Equestrian Studies and Equine Management, and I'm also a riding instructor here at the Western Farm. And I'm here with Art O'Brien, who's the director of the Western Riding Program. So we're going to give you a little bit of an overview of what we do out here um, within our department, especially at the farms. And we're happy to take any questions afterwards, like Brandon mentioned. So in the equestrian studies department, we actually have three programs of study. We have an equestrian studies English training emphasis. We have equestrian studies with a Western training emphasis. And we have an equine business management degree. We offer a bachelor's of science uh, majors in all three majors. We also offer an associate's degree in equestrian studies English and equestrian studies Western. All three programs of study have the same equine science-based core classes that all of our students take. Um, we believe that students need a general and um, overview of all the important areas in the equine industry, regardless of their discipline of choice and what direction they're going. So all of our students take intro to equine science. They take a horse judging class. Um, they take equine nutrition and equine reproduction. And in addition, students also get to choose from over 40 different elective offerings to fulfill their elective requirement for their equestrian degree. And with our elective offerings, students can really tailor their education towards their interests because we offer a variety based on different aspects of the industry that a student may want to explore while they're here. So the majority of our students in the equestrian department do double major. Um, as a department, we're very accommodating to double majors. The most popular double major is with equine business management and equestrian studies. Um, equine business management is a degree that allows students to get some basic business background and knowledge um, in addition to equine industry education so that they are prepared to enter the industry in a variety of business related areas. It works very well with the equestrian studies degree. Um, we have some of the same similar classes as the core is the same for both and electives do cross over for both majors as well. So in addition to the three programs of study, we also oversee four equestrian teams in this department, the IHSA Western team, the IHSA Hunt Seat team, we have an eventing team and we have a ranch horse team. And more than half of all of our students are 
um, members of at least one of the equestrian teams. And these teams are open to all majors, not just equestrian students. Um, and we welcome all majors to try out at the start of the school year. And we select new teams every year. So everybody has an equal opportunity at tryouts to make a team. So I know you're watching this segment because you're interested in Western equestrian. So Art's gonna talk a little bit now about our Western writing program, and then we'll give you an overview of what we do out here year by year. So welcome everyone. I'm Art O'Brien. I'm the director of the Western program, as Mary said. In addition to that, I'm a active writing instructor here and an active professional in the industry. A number of our, all of our faculty member members are active in the industry in some facet or another. We have six faculty members that are actively teaching the courses uh, from junior, from freshman through senior year. Uh, freshman year, we have Mark Smith students and then sophomore year, myself, Jerry Coleman, and Mark Smith instructed the sophomores. And then in junior year, Spencer Zimmerman, myself, and Jerry Coleman instruct the juniors. And then senior year, Mary Marsh, Clark Bradley, and Jerry Coleman instruct the seniors. We all have kind of areas of interest, areas of specialty that we've established ourselves actively in the industry. And we're kind of carrying on some of the thoughts and knowledge that we have from those different disciplines into our different years of teaching here. Uh, the, you know, it's many of the faculty members, all of it, we are active, active in the industry, but not just as horse trainers, but active in many different facets. And we encourage a lot of the students um, to, to spread out and, and go a lot of different directions and not just specifically training here, although our, our base of education and curriculum is training here at the Western Farm. Um, and the more knowledge they have, the students have in those different specific areas, the more valuable they are in the industry in various different directions. So we do expose the, the, the students to everything from um, cult breaking to pleasure, Western pleasure, to all around events, to cutting, um, and to, to also to reigning the pinnacle of our industry here. Um, so we, we really try to encourage the students to reach out and, and go different directions. We have students with all different passions that are active, active in the program. And we sure encourage that as they move on through the, through the years here. And we, we own a pretty extensive size horse herd as well. At, at this farm, we own almost 120 head of horses. Our students ride multiple horses a day or multiple horses a semester for a freshman. Um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors might ride multiple horses a day. We do also take outside horses that we train for the public, so that provides our students with some real-world uh, customer relations experience and preparing themselves for an, a career in that type of work as well. Um, but I would say that our horse herd is a big strength of what we do here. We have really, really nice horses that were donated and horses that we've trained up through our program, um, and our students do that training themselves of the instructors. Um, so that's a, that's a special part. Our program is, our riding program is both English and Western early months. We drive five weeks, um, three or four hours a day of class and additional hours um, after class as well. So we're really very focused on our riding programs keep things pretty stable the freshmen are here from two to five every day involved in that they do the feed evening feeding of the horses and some care for the horses they're all assigned the individual horse uh, for a period of time three to four weeks and then they move on to another horse freshman year each freshman will probably ride between six and eight horses during the course of the year um, these are school horses that that have been in our program for a number of years that are probably more well educated than most of us in, in something specific. And they, nothing can teach a student to ride better than a, than a good horse. And these horses really know their job. And um, I'm not so sure they don't listen to the instructors sometimes as, as the students are being asked to do something and do it for the students. So they do it, a lot of different exercises, a lot of drills. Some of it's focused on the, on the rider to make them a more balanced rider possibly or create something that a rider that's safer to, to move on to the different disciplines, especially colt breaking the, the following year. Um, some, of the, some of the exercises are drills that the horses have to execute and the horses do those drills 
with the assistance of the rider um, so that the rider has a better understanding of the exercise or drill. So the next year, the following years, they can utilize that drill that they learned freshman year to advance a tr the training of one of the their future horses. So it's a multitude of different things. There, there are each each week there are demonstrations by the by the instructors and by the senior teaching students on some facet of training, some facet of horse care, um, some facet of the industry, and just to expose the the freshmen to as much as possible uh, during that that year. Sophomore year is a really exciting year out here because that's the year that students learn about colt breaking. So our sophomore students will start at least one horse each semester. Some students will start two horses each semester. Um, and that class really is focused completely on colt breaking. A lot of the horses that are, we are using in that class are sent to the program through our Send Your Horse to College program where horses from the community are sent in for training for a semester and are assigned to it horse, I'm sorry, the horse is assigned to a student, a sophomore student who's responsible for its training and progression for the length of the semester. So that student will communicate with the owner about how the horse is doing and the progress that they're making together. Um, and we break it down as um, sophomore instructors to really focus on the safest way to break, to start a horse. We go over a lot of groundwork. We have multitude of demos early in the semester and throughout the semester on how to handle these young horses, how to get them saddled, how to progress them to walk, trot, canter, walk, jog, lope, how to do different disciplines. And eventually at the end of the semester, we present these horses in a final exam, which is actually a horse show for us. So owners come to watch their horses, students enter different classes such as Western pleasure or horsemanship or showmanship, and they show their horses to a judge um, to who will be evaluating them against the industry standard while their instructors are assessing them against um, our own curricular standards. So they're getting a final exam grade and they're also participating in a horse show at the same time. The colt breaking really is an exciting year because we see so much progress from the horses throughout the semester, but more importantly, we see our students really develop you know, their own sense of horse training and their, the importance of having good connection with your horse and, and using body language and understanding your horse and being able to progress them from a completely unbroke prospect into something that can be rode by an owner and can move on to further training um, after they leave here. So it's a, it's a really great year. Students, I think, really enjoy that year. They learn a lot and they become more courageous as riders. They develop a lot of confidence and they learn a lot about basic horse training there. So as faculty members here and listening to what Mary just mentioned in regards to sophomore year, each year we, we really listen to the students. We listen to the, what passions they may have. We all watch the students grow as they're here and maybe find a new passion. Um, and it's really sophomore year, it, it really shows through. Like we have thoroughbreds that are going to the track, polo ponies that are going to the polo field, reining horses that'll go on to be reining horses, pleasure horses that may go on to that or the all around. Um, we have some gypsy vanners. We have various, various different breeds that we accept in all Western breeds with the exception of the thoroughbreds, although we'll have a warm blood or two at times. Um, and we allow the students to kind of tell us where they think they want to go and explore that. But we also push them in other directions too, just for them to feel that and not stay too closed-minded on it. But we sure encourage the students to progress in whatever direction they care the most. Junior year is a, a little different year than the sophomore year. The juniors are here the mid part of the day. You'll see some of the juniors riding possibly behind us. Um, and they'll have up to four horses during junior year. They'll have a school horse that they're learning one special discipline with, like for instance, the exciting thing of working a cow on cutting um, or teaching a horse to change leads or having a horse teach them how to change leads, um, how to do the trail with a horse that's, that is a broke horse, how to progress the green broke horse. That's a huge part of junior year, which is a huge part of most people's, most people's business in the industry which is bringing that prospect on to be a, a worthwhile product of society where, where a rider could get on and ride it and be, feel safe on it. It's not an unbroke colt anymore. We call it a green broke. As a director here, I have to categorize the horses as the senior horse, the college horses come in, applications come in to unbroke, green broke, or broke horses. Junior year, each of those students ride two of those green broke horses to progress them. There's a tremendous rapport that, that happens between the owners of those horses 
and the, and the students, many of the students here as alumni still have their owners that we've assigned them um, relative to their horse. They still have a bond with that owner and they're receiving horses from them um, or some credit for them from them, something for the future. So, so the junior year is, is a multitude of learning some more specialized disciplines. In addition to that, bringing on that Greenbrook course to, to make it a worthwhile member of society. Senior year, we actually focus on three specific disciplines. And when you're seniors, you focus on Western pleasure, reining and ranch riding. And you are introduced to these disciplines earlier years, like Art mentioned as freshmen and sophomores and juniors as well. Um, we just have a maybe a deeper level of focus on these disciplines as a senior. Um, for the reining group, seniors are assigned to a school owned horse who is a finished reining horse, usually at the caliber that can be actually shown at a National Reining Horse Association NRHA show. And throughout the first semester, students learn about the different reining maneuvers and they put them together in patterns at the end of the semester. And then in the spring semester, we do more in depth reining work and more difficult reining patterns. And we actually culminate that group into an event that we hold at the end of the spring semester called the Dale Wilkinson Memorial Reining Class. And that class is named in honor of Dale Wilkinson, who is the founder of our equestrian programs here at Finley, also known as the grandfather of reining as a discipline. Um, for that reason, reining is very important to us here at Finley. And we build on what students are taught through their freshman, sophomore, junior years to culminate in that performance as a senior in the reigning final. Um, the ranch riding class is a group is another part of our senior year and students will use a variety of different horses for that group. Some of the horses used in that group are from the Send Your Horse to Co College program that Art discussed a little bit earlier. So they might be Greenbroke horses. Some of those horses are actually um, horses that we own as a university and we're preparing them to sell in the spring at our spring horse sale, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. Um, but students in that group prepare those horses for the ranch riding class where they're getting them better broke they're getting them more easy to ride for a variety of different people and prepared to show in a ranch riding class. And then we have the Western Pleasure group in our senior year. Western Pleasure is another discipline, like I said, that we do in other years as well, but we focus on a higher level of Western Pleasure horse when students are in their senior year. They're assigned to a horse that's very well bred and trained and started as a Western Pleasure horse during their fall semester. And then during the fall semester, students have the opportunity to decide whether they would want to focus on a Western pleasure prospect in the spring or a ranch riding prospect in the spring. And as a university, we'll actually go out and purchase yearlings during the fall semester to satisfy the needs of that class, whether it's Western pleasure or ranch riding. Students are gonna get the opportunity to select one of those horses to use for their spring semester to break, to start as, a, as an unbroke horse and then to progress towards the direction of Western pleasure to show in a Western pleasure futurity or towards the direction of ranch riding to show in a ranch riding futurity. And those events are also held on the same day that we hold the reigning final. We call that day Senior Day. It's a day that we're very proud of here at the Western Program. Um, parents come to watch and, and so do outside spectators and people that might be interested in looking at those prospects who will then be sold in our spring horse sale, which is usually held the following day on a Saturday at the end of April. So the spring horse sale, just to go off track a little bit from senior year, the spring horse sale is another big part of our Western equestrian program. That horse sale is held annually at the end of our spring semester. And it is completely put on by our equine marketing class, which equine marketing is an equestrian elective course, but it's also required course for the equine business management students. It's a very popular elective. I would say most of our students that are not equine business management majors do take equine marketing because it's an excellent real world opportunity for students to learn how to put on a horse sale. Students do all the work for that horse sale. They do, um, they put the sale catalog together. They do the sale videos and the sale pictures of the horses. The horses that are in that sale are being trained in our program by our students under our guidance and then are presented at that horse sale on that Saturday at the end of April by our students and by the equine marketing class. Um, proceeds we, that we develop from that horse sale, some of that revenue goes back into the program to purchase the young prospects to sell the following year and other revenue is used towards scholarships that we award as an equestrian department. So that horse sale benefits the program, it benefits the students, and it's an excellent learning opportunity for the students in the equine marketing class who are actually doing all of that hard work. So. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that, Art? 
the the teams that that we have uh, may, uh, Mary briefly mentioned mentioned the teams. Uh, we have two specific teams over here: the I just stay Western team, and that's a team of horsemanship riders um, and uh, ranch riding riders now, and then reining riders. Uh, it's a very highly competitive team. We've been national champions a number of times um, within our region through through uh, national champions actually. Um, and had a lot of na individual natural champion riders. Uh, in addition to that team, we also have a ranch riding ranch team. And that team, we work cattle on that team. I, I am actually one of the coaches of that team. And we work cattle on the team. We do ranch riding. We do ranch trail, all the ARHA events. And we are, we are an ARHA approved team. Um, so that's one of the other things. And a number of the students that are on those teams are not necessarily equestrian majors. I'd say probably right now about 30% of the students that are on the team are not Western, are not Western equestrian majors. And we allow anyone on campus, as Mary said earlier, try out for those teams and we encourage their participation if they can make, that, make the team. Like I'm glad Art mentioned teams because it almost forgot to bring that back up. And the Western equestrian team, like Art said, has won numerous national, I think we've won overall, the University of Finley has won eight um, national titles in IHSA seven of them from the Western team. And the last two years that we actually were able to attend national competition, 2018, 19, we were back-to-back -back national champions. So we have a very, very strong team. And student, uh, students on the IHSA team practice once or twice a week. They are really engaged. It's a wonderful team activity. Um, and we're still practicing right now. This fall, we don't have a competitive season within our region, but our students are practicing and preparing to ha hopefully have a very competitive spring season ourselves as riders and we're going to be ready for it when I say does resume. So I don't know if there's any questions at this point, Brandon. So now we're going to open up the session for a little bit of Q&A. So if you guys have questions, please drop your questions in the Q&A. All right, we've got one. So what are the job opportunities after graduation? How difficult is it to find a job in this area? It's a really, really open-ended question because there's a lot of job opportunities depending on what part of the industry students are interested in getting into. So since we are such a strong riding based program, a lot of our students do want to be um, professional horse trainers or riding instructors. And we have a lot of opportunity for students that leave this program to work as assistant horse trainers at, with reputable people that have um, good and strong businesses in the industry in a variety of different disciplines. We also have students that are interested and getting more of the coaching or instructing end. We always have job opportunities at other institutions, well, whether they're high school boarding schools looking for instructors. Um, so there are some NCAA coaching opportunities that come through here for students that are looking for that kind of work. And then we have students that, are, that leave here and are, feel like they're prepared already to start their own business, whether it's a lesson program that they're going to join in or or start on their own at their own facilities and students that do that want to go that direction are able to prepare for that by taking some of our teaching classes while they're here and a lot of those students have taken the equine business management double major so they have some business background to start in their own business that way so I, I would say there's there's a lot of job opportunities it really depends on what direction students want to go in addition to that we have we have alumni that are at, at breed different breed organizations international breed organization the Payne Horse Association National Staff Bit Association, um, a couple international feed companies, Kalmbach Feed, which happens to be right here in Ohio. Right now, there are two Finley, Finley alum that are working there. There are, there are positions um, in that those directions too. I think one, one more thing I'd like to add to that though, is as a result of our act, the faculty's activity level in the industry in general, uh, we have so many contacts with people from a day-to-day, week-to-week basis away from here because we're not just stuck in the university program, but we are actually out in the field also. And that helps the student placement so, so, so much. All right, so next question. Do you offer any therapeutic writing instructing courses? We do offer an intro to equine assisted therapies as an elective. That's EQST 103. It's offered in the spring semester. It's a very popular elective. Um, we offer it every spring. Students that take that course get to um, visit and become acquainted with our lo local therapeutic riding um, association, which is Challenge Champions, which is just on the outside of Finley, the city of Finley limits. 
Um, so students go and visit that center and they, and they meet people there and it ends up being an excellent internship opportunities for students that want to take their knowledge of equine assisted therapies to the next level and start doing some volunteer work, start doing some registered internship work and hopefully maybe even turn into a, a, a part-time job and maybe a full-time job. We actually have two graduates right now that are working at Challenge Champions in management positions and they're doing very, very well there. Um, and Challenge Champions is, a, is a, like I said, since they're local, we have a great relationship with them. We actually have a really good internship relationship with them, whether students are interested in doing the actual work of therapeutic writing or work in the marketing field, um, they have opportunities for internships with that as well. So I would say we do have opportunities for students to learn about therapeutic writing through that intro course and then through um, their exposure to Challenge Champions. Sorry, I was muted. Our next question, what is the team trial process? Team trials occur at the start of the academic year in the fall. Um, since they're open to all students, regardless of their major, announcements are made campus-wide for when the tryouts are held. They're usually held in the first couple weeks of school um, out here at the farm over the course of two or three nights, depending on the team. Art, as head coach of Ranch Force team, can give you more detail on, on what that looks like for that team. So on the Ranch Force team, the tryouts entail a organizational meeting that anyone interested in trying out from campus um, after class hours. So at nine o'clock at night, we meet on campus and uh, that within that first two weeks of school, anyone interested can find out more about the team, more about the tryout format, et cetera. And then as they sign up for the tryouts, the tryouts are usually three nights. Uh, we've averaged for the past several years between 75 and 100 students trying out um, for 20, roughly 20 slots on the team. The, the four offices that are on the team are automatically on the team for the next year. So we are filling in those other, the, those other slots. Um, the tryouts consist of um, riding one of, the, one of our school horses, one of our very safe, honest school horses that, that is a ranch riding horse. And then they do a simulated ranch riding pro pattern. Um, it's not all evaluated on how perfect their pattern is, but actually how much feel it looks like they have, how much potential they look like they have we could bring on, like any other coaching assignment. And I evaluate the student on how, what, we could, what they could gain from our, our program. Um, but also what we could mold them into as far as a competitive exhibitor. Um, and we have various different levels of students on, on those, that team. And the IHSA team is similar in structure where their tryouts would happen on a university owned horse and a horsemanship type pattern. And there's different, different leveling based on the rider's previous experience, but they try out against each other. And then the coaching, the coaching staff is evaluating riders and and trying to spot that kind of talent that Art's talking about that they can use for their horsemanship team as well. So, but it is important to note that our teams are extremely competitive and it's hard to get a spot just because of that reason. I think Art mentioned that they have up to 80 people trying out for the ranch horse team with 20 open spots. And that's, you can understand how competitive that team really is. All right, next question. How much horse riding experience does a student need to be accepted into this program? It is not necessary that a horse, that a person have a lot of horse experience to come into our program. Actually, we accept riders that have very little horse experience. And sometimes we find that riders that have very little experience but have some natural ability, um, some athletic ability and, and a good work ethic succeed very well here in our question programs. We have a huge range of students with experience levels that come in as freshmen. We have students that have ridden their whole lives and students that have only been able to ride at horse camp. We've had students that come from long show careers and students that have never been to a horse show before. Um, and it's actually really fun for us as instructors to see students come in, from such a different, you know, wide range of backgrounds. And at the end of the freshman year, have such a solid foundation, they're ready to move into the cult breaking and all the more advanced training work that we do here. And how we adapt to that in regards to the students that are, that are, are accepted here is we adapt to try to teach, teach everyone the same to keep everyone on the same page in, in our teaching curriculum is we, we uh, assign horses appropriately. So maybe a student with, with more, uh, more experience, more ability, um, basically more experience, would get that more challenging horse, while a student would, with less experience, less balance, et cetera, 
would get that horse that that it is is so experienced that he's a safe safe mount for him. All right, the next question. Can you mind that the question said he's on majoring in animal science? No, there is no minor in equestrian studies. The closest, we don't have a minor program in equestrian, but we do offer an associate's degree in Western and an associate's degree in English equestrian. So that degree is designed to be done in two years. It is not a minor degree program, but it is um, a two-year program that some students that double major with um, animal science will choose to do. Okay, and the last question I'm going to answer, how much does the program cost? So, um, you know, the University of Finley offers great merit scholarships and great sources of aid. Uh, really, the best way to find out what it's going to cost for you is to, first of all, apply um, and become admitted. We will create you a financial aid award and your admissions counselor will go over all the costs and scholarship opportunities. Um, this year, we are awarding our merit-based scholarships based off of GPA. And all of that information is posted on our website. So please go check that out. Um, at this time, we are going to move into our student panel um, and open that up for questions. Um, so if we could get our panelists to jump on. And we are gonna just do some introductions. So we have Maverick here, Callie and Kara. Um, all three of them are currently seniors in the Western Equestrian Program um, and are great representatives of our program. Um, so let's start with Maverick. And if you could just introduce yourself, where you're from and what you want to do, um, the stage is yours. Alrighty, um, I'm Maverick Gunther. I'm originally from Wisconsin. So it was a little bit of a distance to come to Ohio. Um, I'm a double major with animal science and equestrian studies in the Western program. Um, my future goals are to go to grad school for equine science and see where we go from there. All right, Kara, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Kara Walter. I am a senior in the Western Equestrian and Equine Business Management um, programs, and I have a double minor in business and intercultural studies. I'm originally from Ohio, so it wasn't that big of a move. Um, and my future goals, I would say, just continue to learn and grow in equine industry, whether it be in um, sciences, training, or nutrition, or something like that. All right, and Callie. Hi, my name is Callie Bearhost. Um, I'm a double major in animal science and Western equestrian studies. Um, this is my last year here, and then after I graduate, my plan is to move. Oh, I'm also from New Jersey, um, but my plan is to move to Oklahoma and be an assistant trainer for uh, calf horse trainers. Very good. All right, so now it's time, whatever questions you have, let's drop them in the Q&A and we'll see, see what we got. Um, but I guess I will ask the first question, where's your favorite place to eat in Finley? Um, uh, that's a hard one. Uh, I probably like Logan's, it's an Irish pub. It's pretty good. It sounds really stupid, but um, I like to go to Chick-fil-A just because it's so quick and sometimes you're just trying to grab lunch or something before heading to the barn. And so it's just kind of like my guilty pleasure go-to. All right. Come on, guys. Uh, we got to have say, some well, questions here. I love like Sorry, Kara, I cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> We might have a little bit of lag. That's okay. <laughs> you can go. Go again. Okay. So I would probably say my favorite place to go is George House. They have such good coffee. So good. And their cookies and muff punches, they're all just so good. And they're all so nice there. It's just wonderful. All right. So we don't have any questions in this Q&A session. So I guess I will ask another question. Um, <laughs> so how do you get to the farms? What's the best way to get to the farms? What's available? Uh, so for me, 
from where I live, because I live close to the university, I take the highway sometimes on 75, um, especially if I like want in Duncan or if I'm running late. Um, but if not, no one's out. But if you go main street during the day, it's usually kind of busy. Well, cool. all right, Maverick, this question is for you. Um, how, how's the IHSA team? Have you enjoyed being a member of the IHSA team? Oh my gosh, I love being a part of the IHSA team. So before I came to the university, I had hardly any show experience. I kind of just did the 4-H thing and did a lot of trail riding and a lot of stuff on my own. So it was really exciting for me when I got like the little email that said I made the team and we started practicing. And even within the first couple of months, I improved so much as a rider and it was so exciting for me. And now as I'm a senior and in the open division on the team and I get to see the younger members, the underclassmen grow and develop as riders. And that's been really rewarding as well. And it's really cool. Like when we have shows, everyone, um, helps out with that or when we go places we just have like a really good group and it's kind of like a family atmosphere with all of us just having a good time but yet being very serious and trying to do our best. All right and this question is for Callie the president of our ranch horse team. Um, how have you enjoyed being on the ranch horse team? What opportunities has that brought to you? Um, I love being a part of the team. I tried out for my freshman year and got on to it. And then we were able to go to outside shows. So I went to one, so that was really cool. It was in Kentucky. Um, I was able to take a senior rainer. So that was kind of like the first actual rainer that I've ridden. So I learned a lot from her. Um, and we were able to host shows too. So it's definitely like a lot of team bonding and being able to work as a team. Um, and then my sophomore year, I was elected as treasurer, and then my junior and senior year, I've been president. So definitely a lot of opportunities with leadership within the program and learning how to put on a show and how to organize a lot. Um, but we do everything from ranch riding to cow stuff, um, work on patterns, and then just like learn, because you get to keep the uh, same horse all semester. So you get to learn how to, um, like train and keep going with one horse. And so it's a it's a cool team. I enjoy it. All right, so what are some possible jobs that you guys are looking at in the future? And what have you looked at in the past? We'll start with Maverick and then we'll go to Callie and then Kara. So I'm personally very interested in like the science background between the horses and animals in general. So I have decided that I wanna to go to grad school for equine nutrition or exercise physiology. Um, and with that, I'd like to do a more research type job and then possibly go on after that, get my doctorate and teach because I have a really like big passion for helping others learn and grow as well. So I think like the ultimate goal would be to be a professor, maybe at Finley, you never know. And have like more of a research science job based um, job in the meantime. So uh, coming to Finley, I had a very open mind about what I wanted to do. I wasn't really sure, but I just knew I wanted to do something within the equine industry. And then after my sophomore year, I got a breeding internship in Maryland where it was strictly like I learned how uh, to do like the AI stuff, how to um, breed and collect horses. So that was a really cool experience, but I figured out from going there for the summer that that's not strictly what I wanted to do. And I enjoyed the training and riding aspect of it. So then after my junior year, I went and worked for cow horse trainers in Oklahoma and I really enjoyed it there. And then after that summer, they offered me a job. So I'm gonna go and work there um, after I graduate this year and start Colts. And then they said that I'll have the opportunity to show some horses uh, as long as I stay there. So it's definitely a cool opportunity that I'm excited about. So when I came to Finley, I thought I was going to be having my own training barn and everything. But as I've learned more, I've gotten more into um, wanting to do more of the science 
aspect of it, kind of like what Maverick said. Um, I'm thinking about getting an internship with a nutrition company, um, a feed company, and possibly going and getting my master's in nutrition or equine science or animal science, something around there. Um, that way I can be in the industry, but helping um, horses and individuals learn how to care and properly um, feed their horses so that they can have a healthy and happy life. Awesome. All right, next question. Um, I know Maverick is a double major in equestrian and animal science. I'm gonna, and I don't know, Kelly, are you a double major as well? So both of you can answer this question then. Um, how has it worked being a double major in animal science and equestrian studies? So actually the curriculum lines up very well. It's really easy to um, double major between the two. Not that double majoring is ever that easy. Um, but a lot of the core classes that we take overlap. So you have the option to take either intro to equine science or intro to animal science. And it's the same with the reproduction and nutrition classes. So those are all overlapping a little bit. And then a lot of the electives overlap as well. So if you need electives for the equine program, they also count for the animal science program. So what I like to tell people is basically I'm getting an animal science degree and then I get to come to the farm and ride as well. So that's kind of what it looked like for me. I agree with Maverick. Um, I am the industry, we're both industry, or you're science, right? Okay, uh, well, I'm the industry part and I figure like it lined up a lot easier, the classes and electives. Um, the pre-vet is, I mean, I don't think it's impossible, but I mean, it's definitely harder than the other two options. Um, so like for me, I'm not the most studious person. So the industry option, they, the classes lined up. So I didn't have to take as many classes. So it worked out for me and it's definitely, it's definitely possible. Yeah, I should have talked a little bit more about that. So I am the science option. So that just means that I'm taking more like chemistry and biology and then some like upper level um, nutrition and reproduction classes, but um, like Callie said, the industry option does work just a little bit better most of the time. Awesome. And then Kara, I'm just going to pinball off of that. And I want you to talk about your double major with equine business management and equestrian studies. Yeah. So with the equestrian business management, like the animal science, it kind of lines up and fits together very well. Um, there's a few business classes that you'll have to take and it's really not hard to fit into your schedule. Um, I actually added two minors because I had so much extra time. I was like, I might as well add two minors. <laughs> so it's definitely doable. And a lot, a lot of the only part is, is as you get to junior and senior year, a lot of the business classes that you have to take are going to be during like barn time once in a while so next year I'll have or next semester I'll have a class at like noon but everybody is so easily um or willing to work around that class time um so I can still come out and do my barn stuff and then go to class and then come back um and a lot of the since I'm equine business management it talks more about how to use business in the equine industry rather than just straight business Wonderful. All right. Next question. Which year of the Western Equestrian Program was your favorite and why? So for me, my favorite year was for sure sophomore year, breaking out the Colts. And it's really funny because I think everyone either loves sophomore year or absolutely hates it. Um, but it's a big change from freshman year because you get to have like the same horse uh, all semester and it's only a product of what you've done to it. So at the end of the semester, it's just so much rewarding to see the final product that you have because you know that you were the one that did it yourself. And I think that was just really exciting. I 
I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite year. Um, I enjoyed every aspect of each year just because we were able to go through all the steps and there's like different satisfactions with everything. So like your so your freshman, sophomore year, you're more kind of like they like really teach you and they're right there with you, like teaching you through the steps. Whereas junior and senior year, they kind of let you go by yourself so you can figure things out and then come to them for questions. So I enjoyed that aspect of it, like having those issues and like, feeling different things and being able to go to the instructors and telling them your issues and then having them kind of let you go again and figure it out and try and fix the problem by yourself. So I think every year has its like cool advantages and that every year is pretty fun. So I really like sophomore year um, just because of like what Maverick said, you get to take a blank canvas and like make it your own and it's all the work you've done but I would have to say that junior year is my favorite year just because we get the three different horses three or four different horses and each one is able to learn um, how each horse rides and how you want it to ride if that makes sense and you get to go through all the different disciplines in the equestrian world in the western industry and so you get to see almost your potential of how to get them all to go through the dip, the disciplines I don't know does that make sense I think it made sense but that's that's why I liked it it was I, I feel like I got more great um okay so I'm going to answer this next question this question is, when is it expected for the financial aid award letters to be sent out? So we are starting to pull the FAFSA now and hopefully by the end of November, our first um, batch of financial aid award letters will be sent out. Um, so as soon as you're admitted into the program or any program um, and we can pull your FAFSA, we will start creating that financial aid award and then your admissions counselor will reach out to you and discuss that with you. All right, another question for you guys. How big are your classes, um, specifically how big are your classes in the writing versus the lecture-based classes? So I would say for your on-campus lecture-based classes, um, you might have some larger, like 40, maybe max 50 um, for some general education classes. But for anything that's major specific, I would say 20s and below are what you're gonna are what you're gonna find, and I think that's really great. So you can have a lot more interaction with your professor and good discussions with your classes. Um, out here at the farm, I would say that like freshman year we tend to have bigger classes, and then by the time you get to your senior year, I think we have 23 right now, um, seniors and probably around 40 freshmen. So I feel like that's pretty typical. All right. So we, we have no more questions coming in right this second. Um, so I'm just gonna chat with you guys for a second and say that we are, we did send you an email. Um, so all of you guys have an email and in that email contains a virtual tour of the Western Farm and the Animal Science Farm. Um, so be sure to check those out. Um, also, there's a Google form in that email. And if you fill out that Google form, we'll make sure to send you a t-shirt um, and some information on the program. So jump on, fill that form out, and we'll make sure we get that to you. Um, do we have any other questions for our panelists here today? I'll give you just a few seconds to ask any other questions. Uh, but I would like to thank all of you for coming. Um, and like I said before, we really want to make sure that you sign up for a private visit. We want to show you our facilities, let you chat with our faculty members. Um, that's very important to us that we get you here. Um, I apologize again for having to go virtual, um, but we're all battling COVID-19 together. Um, and we tried to make this day really good for you guys. As you can see in the background, I'm just going to move my laptop a little bit. We have a group today in the arena. So the rainers are stopping kind of a fun time. All right, so we have one more question. So any suggestions on how to choose between the two and four year program? 
Um, I guess I can answer this question because I struggled a little bit um, with it myself. Um, I would say don't decide too early, first of all. So like, make sure you come here, you do it. And if you're looking, like it depends what your goals are as well. Like if you have a double major, sometimes it's a little bit more doable to do the two years. But if you have the time in your schedule, I think there's a lot more personal growth and rider growth that you don't get the opportunity to have with just the two year. Not sure if that really made sense, but. No, that was great. Thank you, Maverick. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, additional questions, um, please. All right, I'm seeing you open the email and did not see this Google form. Okay, we will make sure that we get that um, Google form out to you guys. Um, if it was not located in that email, we'll make sure that that's sent out. Um, and we actually do have another question for the students. We do have a few more minutes left. So we wanna make sure we can answer all of these. What core curriculum courses did you take? And was there an option to take higher courses in biology um, and tougher science courses within your curriculum? Um, I guess I can answer this one since I am like the science, animal science, science option. Um, but first of all, for the core classes, um, there's basically just like certain requirements that you have to meet. So like um, there's different sections and then you pick a class within that section. So between English, math, different sciences, social sciences, and foreign language art, like that type of stuff. So there's just classes you can pick from them. I think one of the coolest ones that everyone seems to want to take is ceramics for their art class. That seems to be fun. Um, but as for options to take higher level um, science classes, that's definitely an option. Um, for me in the animal science science, I have taken five semesters of chemistry and a lot of biology. And that's just part of the curriculum. And you don't necessarily have to be um, like a bio major or something like that to take those classes, but those opportunities are there. Wonderful. All right, and I don't see any other questions coming in. So once again, thank you for joining us today for our virtual visit day. Um, we're really happy that you were able to jump on and spend an hour with us. Uh, our English equestrian session will come on at 2.30. So make sure to jump on for that if you're interested in equestrian studies. Um, all of the barn tour videos will be posted on YouTube by the end of the day. So you guys can check out every, every barn. Um, but please call, text, email me anytime. My name is Brandon. I am one of the admissions counselors for animal science and equestrian studies. Um, my counterpart, Brian, is also an admissions counselor for those two programs. And we'd be happy to chat with you um, and show you around. So thank you guys for coming and, um, you know, stay safe out there.